start at graduation, Bryce's graduation, June 21, 1996, at the high school under the big top. And getting ready to come in. Dr. McCartney in the blue, and the school board, and some of the teachers. I'll see Bryce in a minute, finally in. Family and friends, the class of 1996 is honored and excited to have you here to join us in our finest and final evening as students of this community. We are here tonight to so celebrate and perhaps say our last goodbye of what appears to be an end. But what we should realize is the word commencement is defined as a beginning. And tonight we shall start a new set, a new life a new journey that, like all things, are what we make of it. So once again, thank you for being here and sharing of this moment of our first set. Oh. Both of us 
loved us, educated us, and at times had to endure us. During our time here, we have become a family, influencing and molding each other's lives while forming a web of seeming and endless memories. These memories will stay with us in the present, even after Boresville has become our past. Most of us have lived in Boresville for all of our lives. I think it's safe to say it's time to move on. Run away. This town is a wonderful place to grow up in and to be schooled in, yet it is stifling for us. Run away from Boresville and don't come back until your journey is over, except the part of the when you want to school. I stand here before you and see the familiar faces of my past and my present, and it's a bit of deep truth to know that these faces cannot be perfect. While I can't offer you advice, I have no words for you that are eloquent or profound. I can offer you books. baseball managers he's had, I won't be very long with it. <laughs> a decade after this evening, almost everyone will have forgotten what was said, what was heard, and what was done. However, every single time that you speak, people are going to know whether you are educated or not. Whatever you do, don't shortchange your potential. Because all people are created with the equal ability to become unequal. In 1960, near the peak of his skills was a guy named Jack Nicholas, and he earned approximately $400,000 on the PGA Tour. At the same time, there was another golfer on the PGA Tour, and his name was Bob Charles. As a professional, you probably don't even remember his name. He earned about $40,000 that year, and not counting endorsements that Nicholas got, he made about a tenth of what Jack, was, Jack Nicholas did. It might surprise you to learn, however, that when you took the average number of strokes per round, Bob Charles' stroke average was one half of a stroke less than Jack Nicholas. It might surprise you to know that when you look at CEOs and people who are successful, all they've done is take one extra step, work a little bit harder, and they've stood out in the crowd because they do a little more. They do more than exist. They live. They do more than touch what they feel. 
They do more than look, they try to observe. They do more than hear, they listen. And they do more than listen, they truly try to understand. As I'm getting ready to introduce your speaker, I'm reminded of the story about a frontier judge in Texas who was about to hang an outlaw for his heinous crimes. As is customary, the judge asked if the convicted man had any last words. The outlaw replied, Judge, I'm aware of the fact you have a great reputation in this town. The people think you're fair, smart, they think you're really kind of a wonderful guy. But you know, to be honest with you, Judge, right at this moment, your reputation has been ruined with me. Our speaker's reputation, unlike that Texas judge's, is far from ruined. It is admired. As an educator, he's like fine wine. The older he gets, the better he is with me. I will... <laughs> the thing that impresses me most about your speaker is he is still excited in the classroom, just like every day is his first day on the job. He still gets excited with the students he works with, and he truly loves what he does, and it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Bob Samuel, who will have a final word. I'm not going to take all this. I was just thinking that Chris Dukowitz isn't here, I don't think. I'm not going to tape all of this. Good evening, school community member, parents, family, friends, and of course, class of 1996. It's an honor and pleasure for me to address this year this evening as I've gotten to know you well in the past year. This may be my last opportunity to share with you some insight and understanding of what has made you what you are, what to expect in the future, and how to deal with it. Frequently, I speak with people from the past who graduated some years ago. Generally, I think of those who graduated in the 60s, early 70s. Of course, they're older than that. The, well, the first thing they ask me, some of them are your parents, by the way. <laughs> the first thing they ask me is, how is it possible for you to stand and teach those kids today? Or usually I give them one of these raised eyebrow looks and tell them, do you remember when you did so and so? When you did something? Usually I can pick out what they did. And all of a sudden they, they get this long look on their face and they realize, you're not so bad. They were probably worse than you are. Consequently, I tell you that students today generally are better than those of the past, but there are some significant differences. We still share and interact with each other as students always have. I had, I had a great fortune the other day to be standing outside of my office. Here comes Matt and Mike walking through the parking lot. Matt, of course, has got this distinctive bag in his hand, and it's one of those white, pink, and brown ones. He's got no reason. Also, the other two, most people overlooked at the time. 
Apple Computer, and Microsoft Corporation. Both started by young people not to get into your cell and were working. And the organization that have grown phenomenal. If that same rate was observed in that same length of time, Jason would be driving 3,000 miles an hour now and getting 100,000 miles per gallon of gas. And it would be cheaper for him to leave his car down in the city rather than pay the parking ticket. Let me take a quick fast forward through some years. 1981. You're getting out of bed. Ronald Reagan becomes president. IBM announces its first PC. And Sony announces the Walkman, a mere $170. The Walkman is fixed with you. So Big Blue has entered the microcomputer race, and you can now take music anywhere just about any time. Just not in my class. <laughs> 1982, the internet is started. Microwave ovens are being sold everywhere. Imagine placing hot dogs in an oven. 60 seconds later, thing done to perfection of sorts. 1983, cellular phones are introduced in Chicago. And for you, school has started. Your first experience in the classroom is one of the many fond notes. Challenger disaster, a few minor oversights, takes to keep on schedule, a willingness to take a risk with the weather conditions and other factors that the space shuttle program has. As the nation will be changing and experiencing the effects, we're too much in a hurry, and willing to take more hurry. 1988. The shuttle discovery has a successful mission, keeping the United States back to this place. Apple Link is started. A novel idea. Offer the public a computer folding board that they can pay for a course of study. Nine, 91 the members of class. And approved by the University of the State of New York for the Purdue Scientific School. And are therefore entitled to their diplomas. Thank you, Dr. Barlow. Mr. On behalf Paul. of the Warrior Board of Education, it's a great pleasure to present the honors and upon presentation of the very class in the next six years. Thank you. Erica 
Leva Meyer. Kristen Beth Nessler. Sarah Nichols. Bell.
but psychology is really biology. Biology is really chemistry. Chemistry is really physics, and physics is really math. So my parents have become so much smarter in the last few years. But it's possible to be alone even when you're surrounded by friends. That friends are what make this place worthwhile. Don't be dismayed at this life. A farewell is necessary before we can meet again. And meeting again after moments or a lifetime is certain for that sort of friends. I've always had trouble with goodbyes. Maybe that's because goodbye is direction. Goodbye is like away. And I hate away. Direction in general is good for you. Lefts and rights confused me, so I had to resort to the only the who method of determining barriers. No pun intended. When you two said, we're looking at your two paws, as soon as you decide which one of them is the right, you can be sure the other one is the left. In second grade, you learned how to read maps. In two dimensions, I had no problems. However, I couldn't translate north, south, east, and west to map the six directions I encountered. Forward, backward, left, right, up, and down. For a long time, I thought north was a off the May 1st arrived. I had a vivid dream. I was standing in a classroom hysterically sobbing and throwing pennies into the hall. An administrator, grabbing my arms to restrain me, shouted above the din, Do you know who you are? Do you know what you're doing? Tears streaming in my face. I screamed, I'm going to protest it and I... I woke up with the phrase throwing a penny on my lips, but I'm sure that wasn't it. The answer from life, the universe, and everything right there. But I woke up. On April 22nd, my family went out to dinner at a Chinese restaurant. Sorry, Eric. We just returned from a visit to Brenda's, and I was struggling to choose between Brenda's and Smith. At the end of our meal, everyone took a portion of the As I broke my open, I found out how desperately hoping that that little piece of paper could be imprinted with the answer to the next four years of my life. Needless to say, neither the word Brenda's nor the word Smith were actually still here. I remember buying a car in December, or was that February? In any case, I'd gone through it, jotting down important dates like vacation, birthdays, and traumatic events like doctor's appointments. In the mid first space, I wrote in large capitals, I know where I'm going. In hindsight, I realized that would probably never be accurate. Of course, interspersed with all the most courteous helper feelings were the greatest times of my life. Summer 95 was awesome. Drama Club made my year this year, with my inspiration for getting up most mornings. Sarah? Our trip to Williams and the two previous hours we spent in the mall trying to get our picture taken and our company for the trip. And all of the children who have become attached to me and likewise do that. Samara and Zach, Lydia, Nick, Mary, Kate, Colin, Ted, Nelson, Tony, and Corey. Thank you for letting me go. Numerous other things. Daddy and Mookie, don't forget to say the sci-fi stuff on Saturday. Stay on your horse and don't throw it.